you are the organizer uh first of all i would like to welcome you sir i have been waiting for this uh, this occasion for quite some time now and uh, i am extremely thankful to you uh, uh, for uh, for being on this uh, session the wildlife and we protection foundation brings to you the 11th lecture of the series conservation of forest environment wildlife and allied natural resources in this session mr vinod kumar yadav principal chief conservator of forest wildlife and chief wildlife warden of west bengal region and biodiversity conservation welcome sir on this session i will present uh, your i will put on your presentation from here and i would request you to uh, present sir i'll just take a moment to put your presentation it will be visible to all right link please okay so just okay. Yes, please. Yes, that's fine. Let's start. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name as uh, is Vinod Kumar Yadav. Uh, as Shivaji already told, and I am the presently the Chief Wildlife Warden and Principal Chief Conservator of Forest Wildlife in West Bengal. Now <clears throat> we all know that the. Um, human wildlife wildlife conflict is a very challenging thing and then more or less it is happening in all the states in india whether it is with the you know the conflict with the leopard whether there is a conflict with the tiger or the conflict with the, you know even the the langurs you know and so many other elephants indian gorgs going straying out so there is every day there is one problem or the other problem and elephant is one of the you know mega fauna it is the largest mammal uh, that we have and naturally when the largest ma mammal it moves from one uh, forest to the other forest and the forest are basically you know uh, fragmented this this creature it needs large space to move is a very good natural resource manager they know you know where they will get their food water shade at which place in which season and accordingly they migrate now during their migration uh, they face problem and naturally they are compelled to move from one forest to the other forest and in between the human habitation agriculture field and so many other things like tea garden coffee plantations and the other establishment and and basically they are also uh, you know the you know they face problems not only by the humans they also they have facing the problems now with the developmental activities there are lot of cases of collision of elephants with the train this lot many elephants are being killed by electrocution and that is another kind of a big issue which is coming up uh, you can see in this slide you know there are elephant herd which has come out from the forest that is in the fringe of the forest and the you see the number of the people which are there surrounding the elephants and that's create the problem and sometimes many times when the uh, one of the elephant they chase these people are also killed and that's the problem next slide please i'll be talking mostly about our uh, west bengal experience uh, west bengal state though is a small state <coughs> with a small elephant population uh, 
like in North Bengal and South Bengal, these are the two areas we have elephant population, but they are the two disjunct population. They are not connected. And in North Bengal, the population, um, you can see it has increased over the year. There were 175, around 150, 175 in 1989. Now they have crossed about 500 to 550. And they are moving to Nepal, Bhutan and Assam. <clears throat> in one way, it is good that the elephant population is increasing. But the another, uh, another the problem is that the population which is increasing they are not getting the enough space. They are, as I told, they are compelled to move through the tea gardens. They are compelled to move human habitations. They are compelled to move to the agriculture fields and then go to the other forest during their migration. Similarly, in South Bengal, the population has increased from 25 in 90s to 150 people, uh, you know, year on the year basis. So that's huge. This is not a, the total West Bengal population. If you talk about around 700 odd elephants, and the 700 odd elephants in, is less than the 1% population of the India Indian elephant, and that is creating more than you know 30% of the problem of the the India. That is, uh, I mean, the depredation problem. The next slide, please. <clears throat> You can see, you know, this is just a kind of a map which is being given for the um, southwest Bengal. This is map. Uh, the brown area, hatched area, is the Mayur Jarna Elephant Reserve, which is around 414 square kilometer. This is the only compact forest there. The rest, you can see, they're all fragmented forest. These were the all Jamindari forest, which were there. And it's a very unique kind of in sal coppice forest. And naturally, when the elephants, they move from one forest to another forest, they face problem. Earlier to the 1989 or 90, the elephants never used to cross the first river that you can see the first river, which is from uh, this side. So they never used to cross. But now the elephants have crossed all the uh, three districts and they have come uh, near to the uh, industrial town of Durgapur. And that is what was very challenging and huge depredation. Next, please. You see the, the kind of the elephants uh, in the agriculture field. They, they cross the roads, they cross the railways. They cross the township and, you know, people are after that. And um, naturally, they are being harassed also. And in doing that thing, many of the people are killed, injured, and their properties damaged. Yes, please. Now, if we just talk about the uh, problems, and this is not all, you know, only the problems that is what we are facing in West Bengal. It is the problem of more, many of the states where the forests are not large chunk of forest is not compact. Now, what is happening is if the large chunk of forest is not compact, there are very highly fragmented habitats, and over two years, you know, all these forests where you know that. They have been degraded, or they have been, you know, um, they. I think there is some sound somewhere. Okay. So, Jiwaji, Jiwaji, you have to mute your mic. You have to mute your mic. Keep your mic on mute. Yes, yeah, end. Please wait. Okay, okay. So the these basically it's very highly fragmented habitat, and this is not the as I said it's not the case of uh, only the West Bengal, but it is most of the forest areas. If you see the problems wherever the forests are fragmented, there are more problem. There is more conflict. 
and the people are also facing problem and the animal is also facing the problem at the same time this is uh, some small chunk of um, the sal corpus forest as <laughs> So I think there is some kind of a sound which is coming from somewhere. I don't know. I just exit the share screen, sir, and that's uh, just put it right. Just a minute. Because everybody is mute, actually. Right. Anyhow, the, the the thing with that we were discussing is basically the talk, the issues about the fragmentations, and the problem is more at the interface of the forest and the the fragmented forest and the human habitation or the agriculture. That is very well known. Now, what has happened is in Southwest Bengal, there are good kind of an agriculture which has been developed. And there is extensive, uh, you know, network of irrigation canal, and because of that, the agriculture in this, uh, even this is a dry zone, the agriculture in this area is very, very, you know, very good. So that is why, you know, now the problem comes. Now, since the elephants, as I, as I said, it moved from one forest to another forest. They were migratory to, you know, coming from the Jharkhand to the West Bengal. And they used to stay for, you know, two, three months and they used to go back. Now, the time, gradually the time of stay in West Bengal has increased. The problem has increased. Now, their gradual expansion of the home range and they are exploring also the new areas. So that is the kind of an, the more challenge. And what is the, uh, the strategy that we need to do is to reduce their area, they reduce their home range, they reduce their in zone of influence so that they, the, you know, the depredation is also reduced. That is one of the challenge that we are facing and how we are doing it. So, they, in when there are incidences that the uh, some elephants, they went up to the Bangladesh and then we have to, you know, uh, bring it back. We tranquilize it. We tranquilize those two elephants which were there in Bangladesh and then we brought it. <laughs> the other problem is, as usual, uh, in India is the high human um, density which is also the West Bengal is having the highest human density in the country. And that is what the problem lies here. The next, please. The other problem is, you know, if we, if we cut off the movement of the elephants from one place to another place, then that, that becomes the more problematic. Now, the earlier the elephants coming from Jharkhand, they used to stay in the West Bengal and they used to migrate from West Bengal to Urisha for some time. Now, at the border of the Urisha and West Bengal, there is a coming up, the irrigation canal has been built up. This has been built up in, on, on the Sewer Rekha River and this has totally kind of an cut off the the movement of the elephants and so the elephants are staying more in the West Bengal and creating problem. So I don't know, you know, they have done it uh, without the consultation. I raised these questions to the uh, uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest Government of India also. There was no kind of an, you know, EIA uh, being done. Then how it, there is no mitigation measures which has been done, and that is creating more and more problems. Next, please. You can see the extent of the problem, that the, how the elephants are in the field, and, you know, the it's being surrounded by the 
people. They are crossing the irrigation canals or rivers when they are being driven from one forest to the other forest. Uh, naturally, these animals are also harassed to a lot of extent. You can see the, you know, the small, small elephant calves which are there. As the pop, as I told you, the population has also increased over the years, and that is another thing. What I feel like, you know, that they are breeding in stress. Though they are being, uh, you know, they are being moving from one place to another place and driven by the people um, that they are after them, and but their population is increasing. That is, you know, one kind of a thing. I think there is a kind of a research which people need to do it. And I feel personally that they are breeding under the stress. Next, next, please. The extent of depredation, you will be surprised that more than 700 people are killed in the last two decades. It's very, very high. And this once the animal, though, if you compare the national data, um that you know the people killed in the road accidents people killed in the road accidents are quite high than the people killed by the animal but whenever the pe people are killed by the animals there is lot of halla gulla in the media there is lot of halla gulla in the tv and that becomes a kind of an issue even the issues are brought up to the chief minister Okay, that these these are the problems. So that is how the challenging it is. It has been seen that, of course, as I as we talked about the forest fragmentation and the depredation is more intensive in the uh, uh, corridor corridor areas with the human interface, and the more that is by the loner bulls, not by the animal uh, the elephant herds. But the elephant herd is responsible for crop damage. Crop damage to the extent of 2,500 to 3,000 hectares area annually. The house damage, though it is a very small area, the house damage is to around 1,200, which is annually. And naturally, the government has to pay the crop compensation to and the compensation for the depredation to all these people who are the victim. And the depredation amount, depredation around has, amount has been, you know, um, we have we were paying 4 lakhs in 1990 and it has gone to 5.5 crores and now it is increasing every day. This 5.5 crores is for South Bengal. And if you take into consideration the North Bengal, it is more than 12 crores. So that is, this is a huge kind of a thing that the government has to pay to the local people as compensation. Next, please. This is the uh, a map of the North Bengal. One side you find it Sikkim, Nepal, another side in the western side, then Bhutan on the north northern side and Assam on the eastern side and the Bangladesh on the southern side. So, if we are sharing the, bond, um, the, the boundary with the three nations and, you know, um, there are uh, elephants which are moving not to Bangladesh from the North Bengal, but they were moving up to the Nepal. I'll just tell you the things. And then it is also going to the Bhutan and the Assam areas. So that is the kind of thing. You can see that green areas, these green areas are the basically the forest areas. That is the eastern side is the Baksa Tiger Reserve, then Jaldapara National Park, then Gurumara National Park, then Mahananda, you know, wildlife sanctuary, it's a chunk of the forest. And then it moves up to the Nepal. So the elephants used areas bordering Nepal is in the Karshiong and the other, you know, nearby areas like Babdogra and Naxalbari. Next, please. And the extent of de depredation, you can see there is a lot of tea gardens which are there in uh, North Bengal. There are more than 125 tea gardens, uh, which used to be the forest areas. 
naturally if they were cleared uh, during the british time and it they were converted into tea gardens and many of the corridors many of the corridors of the these elephants are through the tea gardens now the tea gardens has labor lines they have their own establishment they've got their own factories and that how the depredation starts and similarly there are a lot of you know the as fragmented forest they have to move from one uh, forest to another forest we have made you know we did radio callers uh, to the elephants in south bengal also north bengal also uh, we have the plan to ra- call radio callers more elephants to get more information about their home range and etc their movement patterns their habitat utilization patterns then uh, we in dr raman sukumar is also associated with us who is the elephant uh, spe- in the elephant specialist group and we are uh, have the plans another next year we are going to uh, radio collar another 10 ele- elephants uh, in the state of course the crop red um, uh, the elephants they move during the season and the may season that that is another big big kind of a problem and of course the when there is a dry season then these these people they store the uh, grains in their houses they also store some kind of a local you know liquor which is a hariya which is made up from rice which is attracting the elephants to their houses and that has been killed as a is lot of corridors in the tea gardens and the villages especially in tea gardens so what we have done is we have issued lot of kind of an advisories to the tea gardens what to do what not to do and you know otherwise the the depredation is going to increase if you follow this then the depredation will be reduced and many of the tea gardens of course they are following it many of the tea gardens they don't follow and there how the problem comes in so again in north bengal more than 2500 hectares of crops are damaged the if you take it total so it comes to more than 5000 hectares of crops been damaged in west bengal and on an average around 1500 houses are damaged annually in uh, north bengal and around 7 30 percent are injured and 40 percent are killed. So it's a kind of in huge figure. If you see alone the 650 to 700 odd elephants, they are killing more than 80 peoples annually in West Bengal, and that is you know uh, of course this is this is one of the problem, and that is lot of hue and cry and halla gulla about all of all these things, and many of these uh, these killings. has happened inside the forest area you know whenever the people they go to the forest areas then that will be killed and the people are also killed in the villages but you know there are a lot of instances where the people are killed inside the forest area when they venture into the forest next please next please now if we talk about things strategies we have got two type of strategies the short term strategy and the uh, kind of a long term strategy what we have done is the we have prepared the kind of an uh, standard operating procedures uh, on straying of wild animals so whenever the animals are straying in from the forest area into the human habitation tea gardens or villages or agriculture field uh, what to do our staff what what their duties is how they will tackle this problem that is the kind of an standing standard operating procedures that we have issued to all and that is very helpful you know because uh, it, it is for north bengal and south bengal in um, more or less similar but there is a little bit some kind of an you know, difference and most of these strategies if you see whether it is short term strategy or long term strategy um what we'll be talking about is very site specific you cannot apply all these strategy in one area what we are talking about in 
साउथ बंगाल और नॉर्थ बंगाल देर मे बी सम काइंड ऑफ इन स्ट्रेटजीज विच विल सूट टू महाराष्ट्र और टू छत्तीसगढ़ एंड टू यू नो दसाम मे बी नॉट इट विल सूट टू दर स्टेट लाइक उड़ीसा so as we have talked about that the elephants has moved to the new areas now uh, elephants have occupied the uh, habitats in chatisgarh they have moved to madhya pradesh they have moved to andhra pradesh they have moved partly to the maharashtra even some of the elephants as we talked about they reached up to the goa so the elephant is gradually increasing its home range gradually increasing its area and it's going to the uh, new states also and similarly it is happening within the state also that they are expanding their home range they are expanding their they are exploring new areas and that is how the more and more depredation more and more problem so this kind of an uh, sop is very essential and is very helpful next please now what we do in generally in forest department is being done in other states also on uh, the establishment of anti depredation squads these we call as wildlife squads so basically their job is to drive the elephants from the human habitation to the Uh, forest areas uh, generally it is being done uh, by our uh, well trained staff and with the help of sometimes with the help of local people and i'll be talking to you about you know what kind of recently we have uh, done it so there is a network of uh, anti depredation squads in the north bengal and the south bengal so that you know um, they take quick actions they took they take quick actions but what we have also done is that we have made some kind of an voluntary squads in the villages and also the voluntary squads in the tea gardens so these tea gardens and the villages if we have the voluntary squads then of course they have to you know that helps so if there is a fire in your area naturally you will not wait for the fire engines to come first so you do it some some things fire fighting yourself so it's kind of a thing that voluntary squads are also being raised in the tea gardens tea gardens has their own establishment they have got the tractors they have got uh, you know the labor that force is there so you need some kind of a search light you need to have the they know that area very well if the elephant comes to that area so th- that is very easy and then later on these uh, our anti depredation squads they go next please but what we do is next please but what we do is we also monitor their movement and accordingly we take actions these kind of a trained hulla parties in south bengal is not being used in north bengal as i said it is very site specific these um, hullas uh, i'll show you the what the hulla is hulla is basically like a burning ball which the tribals you know uh, used to um, uh, very intensively used by the tribals in this area from time immemorial and that is what they uh, are very specialized in it and they you will see that how they make it and then how they use it and that is very effective in south bengal but we are not using it in north bengal it has not been a very kind of an successful in north bengal and kind of an behavior of the elephants in north bengal is more aggressive than in the south bengal as you have seen pictures that the people are you know just around the elephants and they are very close to the elephants in the agriculture field and they are not that kind of a very you know aggressive as it is in north bengal and that why you know they can you can go closer you can use hullas you can use that fireball and there is lot of you know um, casualties also but you know this is this is how the if is of course 
crops we make first hours not only in forest areas but also in agriculture field where they can use, they can you know use it to protect their crop next please this is the thing that we wanted to talk to you is about the multiple barriers so this multiple there people used to use some kind of an barriers uh, i you are use, also using it i saw it in milgard that um, to protect the crop from the you know uh, wild animals in and around the milgard this power power fencing which is energized power fencing has been used so we are use, also using it the energized power fencing but you, if you see if you see if you use the energized power fencing alone you know elephant is a very intelligent animal and they will break it they will bring some kind of an you know uproot the tree and you know fell the tree on the power fence and then cross it so that is what they do is so if you there is there has to be a kind of a multiple barriers if you want that elephant should not come and roam in these areas these multiple barriers are very very essential and the multiple areas means the energized power fencing then there is an elephant proof trench then there is a vegetative fencing and this is not everywhere but this is at very strategic locations uh, to protect the crop and to you know um, guide the elephants to move from this place to another place so it is like you know it is being done uh, you know kilometers and kilometers uh, of the areas where we do not want the elephants to go because the elephants are exploring new areas the elephants are um, you know expanding their home range next please the use of kunki elephant squads for chase without capture now if you have heard about that we how we used to capture the elephants earlier we used to capture the elephants in assam Um, bengal and other places and you will be surprised to know that in mughal army there were 40000 elephants in the mughal army there were 40000 elephants and we uh, we do not have 40000 elephants in wild now we have around less than 30000 elephants uh, in india so this capturing technique which was there one of the te- technique was mela shikar that was to using the kunki elephants and then chase the wild elephants and then noosing it and then bringing the uh, using the uh, the trained elephants to catch this this wild elephant but what we are doing is we are not catching it but we are scaring them and we there is a there will be the two or three or four kunki elephants which will go into the elephant herd and they will chase the elephant herd from the uh, non forest areas to the forest areas that is how in many places in especially in north bengal that we do it next please of course we do capture of problem elephants the problem elephants is basically all these kind of an loners uh, which are killing the human being mainly as i told the human deaths are basically by the loner elephants so we capture it the problem elephant and translocate it to the other areas or we tranquilize it basically and then you give overdose maybe you know next please and liquidate so elimination of confirmed drug so the elephant um, the we, we try to identify the elephant who is killing the human being again and again and then we eliminate these these drugs by using the tranquilization you know on these drugs and maybe we give overdose and we generally don't go and shot you know use the rifle and shoot it uh, that is what we practice in west bengal next please yeah that is another issue which 
which is happening all over India is the payment of ex gratia grants to the victims. And it is increasing day by day as the depredation is also increasing. The, the compensation rate is also increasing. The, you'll be surprised to know that Chhattisgarh is giving around 80 crores. Chhattisgarh is giving around 80 crores to the victims. And in West Bengal, we are giving around 12 crores. So different states, they have different kind of problems. And they have got different kinds of rates to, for payment uh, to the, you know, the victims. And this is one way, you know, you can keep the people uh, in a very short term to keep them calm. Now, recently, our um, Honorable Chief Minister has also announced that the person who will be killed by the elephant they are nearby kin and are legal hair. They will be given job. So you can understand the you know the pressure on the government uh, about the depredation of the elephants. Next, please. So this is I was talking to you about hulla. You can see the you know the iron rods, and then there is a sack, and these people they uh, you know make it a kind of a ball and they burn it. These are the tribal people who they do it. And then they run after the elephants uh, using the zulla and then scare that elephant. Of course, the problem shifts from one place to another place. Mm -hmm. But generally, you know, uh, there are quite a specialized streams, as I said. And we have given some training to the Chhattisgarh, Urisa, and Andhra Pradesh also, these hula teams, they have been there and they are quite in demand for driving the elephants from the non-forest areas to the forest areas. Next, please. This is what we try to do is a monitoring and an advanced warning system. Naturally, you have to keep the people informed. Uh, our own staff, there should be a kind of a system that they do the daily monitoring and then inform the people. What we have also done is the kind of bulk SMS system. We, you know, we have the uh, telephone numbers of the important people, villages, panchayat systems, police, police officials, SDOs, BDOs, and, you know, all other kind of people which has got a network. And then we send the bulk SMS to them, giving the location of the elephants. So at least they get a little bit, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of an advance warning that the elephants are nearby. So this is one week that we do. And this nodal, there is nodal officer who contact number is available. And naturally they, uh, they take all the kind of a call if there is any problem. We are also developing a kind of a mobile app. It is it is in quite an advanced stage, where the um, we'll be tracking the movement of the elephants. The even the general public can give that information. Our staff, as I said, that they are giving the SMS. So that SMS will be also added to the mobile app, and these their locations will be plotted on the map also. And we get the information that where the elephants are and how they are moving, if you collate the kind of a data. Then we will be having a kind of a database about the, the conflict, the human conflict with the wildlife, that what is happening, where, where the animals are killed, where the people are killed, where the crop is, you know, being damaged. So that all kind of a thing will be there. There's another system of e-surveillance experiment. Uh, this we tried two and three times. It's I think it's not working very well. Uh, there is a kind of a machine which gives information. It is being there is a, is a kind of a, a mobile SIMs being inserted there. And that signal is being given to the specific people about the presence of the elephant. But there is a need to, you know, kind of a rectify it and make it you know, equipped, they move from um, with the trained staff from one place to another place where there is crisis. And these wildlife squads, 
of course, they are very useful and, and they are being very helpful in driving the elephants from agriculture field, tea gardens, and to other places. Next, please. Of course, the long-term strategies that we have is most of the states are also practicing um, because we said as we you know the habitat fragmentation, the developmental activities that we talk about is a problematic area. We say that the you know the 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 mining activities in Urissa, the mining activities in Jharkhand, the developmental activities as we have shown you know the. Sumal Rekha Canal and the other kind of a canal which is coming up in the Jharkhand, uh, that is blocking and breaking the, the movement path of the elephants. So once it is done, then there is a lot of problem the elephant is facing and the elephant is using the new areas. They are exploring the new areas and then the problem comes. So that is uh, the, of course, there is, we do not have much of the say to the neighboring state, but we brought it to the notice of the government of India, Project Elephant, that you try to, you know, kind of do the rationalize. We have interstate meeting and we had many times, but they have also got, got their own political compensations to, you know, deal and tackle with this uh, elephant problem. Uh, of course, we have got the two uh, elephant reserves, one in South Bengal, which is recalled as Mayur Sharna Elephant Reserve, and in North Bengal, which is the Eastern Dwar Elephant Reserve. We have made uh, the management plans. We have now, we are now in the process of revising those many management plans, taking into consideration, you know, the, the change movement pattern. Then we have got a kind of an strategic action plan then what to do, when to do, and with the timeline kind of a thing, and where we will be taking these actions, where are the problem areas, and how to, you know, tackle that. Then there's a lot of focus on habitat improvement programs in the elephant reserves. The another very important thing that we do in South Bengal is the conversion of monoculture into sal through the sal plantation. You know, salt plantation is also being not being done many in many of these states. So West Bengal has gotten kind of an expertise. I think I, uh, whenever you visit South Bengal, you must see the salt plantations, which has come up ex excellent because these areas are has the salt coppice forest, and not they are being planted. They are all natural salt coppice forest, but. Uh, you know, they, when the forests were degraded after the independence, these these forests, you know, uh, were planted with the quick-growing species like eucalyptus and agashmuni. And then, then the problem comes. And now gradually what we are doing is more than 1,000 hectares of these, every year these monocultures are felled and then they are converted into the salt plantation. That is how we are trying to increase the the kind of a proper habitat for the elephants and other you know wildlife. The increasing of the fodder base by plantation of the you know uh, the trees, grasses, and bamboos. There's a lot of study by the Botanical Survey of India, but by, the, uh, by the, uh, some other organization by our own people about the 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 trees and herbs and shrubs which the elephants they use and that is how we are using it in the plantation model. So these plantation models which are analog plantation models and uh, that is what we are using it for this uh, development of the habitat. But if we consider that then the you know the amount of compensation will be very high. That is what the Chhattisgarh is doing and Chhattisgarh, that is why they paying a huge kind of an compensation for this. Yes. For injury, you know, we, piece, uh, we pay around 30,000 rupees and the treatment of the people in the hospital, etc. Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, and another question from uh, Suresh Thorat, sir, only. 
Uh, how many pet elephants uh, do you have in your state? We have got 101. Okay, okay. Uh, we have got 101, but functionally we use uh, more than 72 elephants for our own duties and pet owners. And um, out of more than that, uh, 15 elephants are very well trained, which we call as a quirky elephant. And rest, you know, they have some problem, like they're in pregnancy, they're, they're, you know, injured, they have got some kind of a treatment, all these kind of things. Yes. Thank you, sir. And uh, another question is, uh, uh, in light of such a great uh, human-elephant conflict situation, what is the response of tea garden owners uh, uh, or the locals? Is it positive or uh, a bit chaotic? No, the tea garden, it's not very, very positive response. You know, these tea gardens, they think of their profits. And of course, nowadays, the, they have started for the last three, four years telling that the tea gardens are in the, you know, going for the losses. But, you know, uh, what we are trying to, we have issued advisories to the tea gardens, what to do, what not to do. Even we have told them to, you know, go for inner power fencing for the labor lines. You know, as I said, many of the elephant corridors are within the tea gardens. When the elephants move from one forest to the other forest, they pass through the tea gardens. Because earlier they were all forest areas. Now they have been, you know, converted into the tea gardens. And we tell them, you know, in order to, you know, reduce the different states where the, this problem is new, like it was in Maharashtra, in Savantwadi area. Then now currently the problem is going on in the Bandogad. So people uh, usually have, uh, uh, you know, try to, uh, they don't try to understand that uh, they are here and they are going to stay there. So they, their strategy is usually to get rid of them. Uh, what message would you like to give to uh, such areas? Well, they are new now and uh, ingestion has just started. Chattisgarh is still quite, quite old. We need to educate the people. We have to, you know, um, as the problem is created by us, as I told you, they are exploring the new areas, they are expanding their home range. The elephants never used to go up to the Bandagar, but the elephants will now go to Kana also. You wait for another 10 years, you will find the elephants in Kana also. Why 10 years? Maybe 5 years. Okay. So, what the people should do, of course, these are there are a lot of practices which can, you know, what is the main problem? The main problem is the, the loss of life, then the damage of the crop, and if there is a, of course, there is a lot of compact forest in and around Kana and Bandhavgad. And they've got the connections also. They've got the better corridors. So, let the elephants be there. You know, you can't kill elephants like that. Of course, there is, they are problematic elephants, but it doesn't mean that you can go and kill the elephants. And uh, as I told you, once we used to have 40,000 elephants in Mughal army. Now you can think of the uh, elephants in wild. The Mughal army, 40,000 elephants is very well documented. It's very well documented. Now we have got only the 30,000 elephants. And many of the areas in, uh, you know, South, South India is also their area has been reduced. Only the, now the Western Ghats, it's there. Now, if you see the elephants have entered into the Andhra Pradesh, they will take the path of the Eastern Ghats also in future. So, here we come to uh, the end of this session. And uh, when it comes to human wildlife conflict or human elephant conflict, the first name which you always used to come to me uh, regarding a particular place is the West Bengal. And uh, the other uh, name of a person which came uh, to my mind and to the minds of most of the people is Mr. Vinod Kumar Yadav. Because uh, he has been quite instrumental in South Bengal 
in handling the uh, handling and containing rather the elephant conflict situation in uh, west bengal so i am extremely grateful to you sir on behalf of all the delegates on behalf of my organization and on behalf of all the viewers which might be uh, accessing this presentation now and in future so i am extremely thankful to you sir we share a long standing relation uh, of almost uh, 20 25 years and uh, we look forward to you our organization looks forward to you for uh, guidance at e each and every step we take towards conservation of forests and wildlife in this country thank you very much sir we are highly obliged that you did agree to attend this session thank you very much it is my duty thank you thank so you much. very much thank you very much. and i am also thankful to all the delegates who attended mr swas kumar had also joined for, uh, joined but uh, uh, he is uh, right now i don't see him yeah he uh, he usually uh, attends our sessions and mr suresh thorat thank you sir and thank you all the other delegates who have attended uh, be with us uh, for our future sessions as well and uh, there is a trend sir that most of the time the earlier speaker joins on our lecture sessions in the subsequent sessions so i would request you to be a part of us whenever we uh, send you invitations for the sure, sure. thank you, you very like much. to like to be active uh, interacting with you and learn more from you sir thank you thank very you. much yadav sir yadav sir yes ji ji ha tum to maharashtra sometime yeah yeah, yeah sure yeah, i have been maharashtra so many times i will come again yeah yeah <laughs> now Welcome we have, we have 10 20 yeah. elephants uh, they have made their home range in our goa border karnataka yeah, border yeah, i know i know i uh, sunil uh, lima is my batchmate and sunil they is your batchmate ha nice yeah. sunil is holding the charge now he is yeah, uh, yeah. he was earlier also there for some time ha ah, so he told me we discuss in quite detail and what to do how to do and what kind of a problem you know they are facing Oh, we 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 are in constant interaction with him. Yeah, so, I sent uh, today's uh, link of this webinar. He didn't join. He must be busy somewhere. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so. You are Sunil's batchmate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pre presentation you, was very good. Only only ten fifteen elephants. The whole Maharashtra is worrying about that. <laughs> you are having five hundred and some odd figures. It's a fragmented habitation. That, that is we how don't have, we have a continuous no, stage of no, the people. People see the problem in a different angle. The politicians see the problem in a different angle. The media see the problem in a different angle. Yes, but yes, the yes. conservationists see the problem in a like you know. It's like you know. It's a welcome to the Ganesha to Maharashtra. It's like that. Correct. That's Correct. a great version. Great version. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. See you. Thank you. That's the right way to do. So nice. See you again. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for being on the session.